What's up folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a quick follow-up video to my Asus 14X laptop upgrade video. In that video, I'll do a quick walkthrough of how easy it is to get into that laptop to replace the SSD. But in the comment section, I did receive a question from a subscriber and the question was, if I replace my SSD, don't I lose my Windows license, settings, and installed applications? And the answer to that question is, if you're buying a new SSD from one of the well-known manufacturers of SSDs, you'll have access to their cloning software. And that cloning application will allow you to clone your hard drive on your laptop to your new SSD. So that when you do the swap, you don't lose anything. And your computer boots up like it normally would. Only this time, you'll have the additional storage that you're looking for. Now, in order to go through the cloning process, you're gonna have to get an M2 SSD external enclosure. And that enclosure will allow you to connect your SSD to your laptop for the cloning process. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through that process. So, let's get into it. In this instance, I have another laptop that we're gonna upgrade the SSD. But I'm gonna show you what you have to do first before replacing a drive. You're gonna need an M2 SSD enclosure in order to put your new SSD in and plug that into the laptop so that you can clone your existing hard drive or your existing SSD on your laptop to the new SSD that's gonna be housed in that enclosure. I'm gonna show you quickly how to install the new SSD into the external enclosure right before the cloning process. It's pretty simple. This particular one is an SSK M2 SSD enclosure which I got from Amazon. There are plenty of options on Amazon, but I'll leave some links. I'll leave a link for this one and links for other options in the description below. This is the same drive. It's already open. I just had to put it back in the box before because I used this drive previously to do the SSD upgrade on my Asus 14X. You want to make sure the notch lines up with the notch here on the enclosure. You know, slide it in, and, depending on the enclosure, some are a little different, but you're going to slide this one in at an angle until it pushes all the way in and you no longer see the gold contacts. And you push this down and you're going to get the screw to screw that in so it lays flat.
some enclosures may come with two cables. One a USB A to C and one USB C to C. Since the laptop we're upgrading has Thunderbolt ports, we'll use the USB C to C cable. And we're good to go. Once you see it lit up, then you know that the drive is connected. All right, so now that we have the external SSD enclosure connected to your laptop, the next step is to begin the cloning process. But to do that, you have to make sure you have the image application for whatever SSD you purchased. So since I have a Western Digital SSD, I went to Western Digital's website and I downloaded the imaging software that they provide for cloning. And that is the Acronis True Image for Western Digital. I'm gonna put links in the description below for this tool and for tools that possibly could be used for other uh, SSD manufacturers, whether it be Crucial, Samsung, Kingston. I'll provide some links below just to make it a little easier for you guys to locate this applications if you need to do, uh, if you need to clone. Um, and there are also some other, some other options that you can find that could do the same thing, but typically your best bet would be to use the application that the manufacturers have readily available. That will pretty much guarantee that you won't have any issues during the cloning process. So here we are. This is a Cronus True Image for Western Digital. I'm gonna hit on clone disk right now. Once I hit clone disk, it's gonna ask you to choose what clone mode you're using. And the easiest and the recommended way is to go the automatic route because it will just pretty much do an exact replica of your existing drive. So you won't miss a beat. All the partitions and everything remain the same. Except when you're done, you'll have more storage because you have a larger drive. So I'm gonna click next. Now, what I do is you, you have to select the source disk and the source disk is typically gonna be disk one, depending on how many drives you have on your machine or what particular drive you actually wanna clone. You may not wanna clone your C drive, you might wanna clone a different drive. This will work for that as well. So I'm gonna clone my Windows, my C drive, which is my operating system drive. And uh, so I'm I have that highlighted and I'm gonna click next. And so now I'm scanning the system, looking to see what drives are connected and making sure that the drives are compatible with the cloning. Now, you select the destination disk, which in my case is disk two, maybe different for you. But I also do advise that if you're doing this process, try to ensure you don't have any other external drives connected because you don't wanna have any confusion and make a mistake and select the wrong drive because then you can lose a lot of information if it's the wrong drive selected. All right, selecting disk two, and I'm going to hit next. You want to delete all the partitions on the destination hard drive because you want this drive to be like the source drive. So, so you're going to click OK to confirm deletion of partitions if you have any partitions on the destination hard drive. So I'm hitting OK. OK, next step, select the required cloning method. And you want to do, it's very straightforward, what you want to do. You want to replace a disk on this machine. Now, if you want to do something else, then you have those two other options you can to choose to use on another machine, or you can use as a data disk. But 
we're going the straightforward route since we're just swapping out our hard drives. All we need to do is choose the first option. So I will select next and I will choose proceed. So now it's locking the partition on the drive so that nothing can be written to it during the cloning process. And it's gonna do its analysis to give us the estimated time left as it's copying and merging partitions. All right, so about 10 minutes later, the disk has been successfully cloned. So now what you would do is shut down your machine. You're gonna disconnect the external SSD from the machine and you're gonna remove your new SSD from the external enclosure and you're gonna swap out your existing SSD for the new SSD. Once properly installed, you boot your laptop back up or you boot your desktop back up, whichever one it is, and your machine will boot up as normal with the new drive, with all applications, Windows settings, your Windows and your current Windows license intact, all with the additional storage you were looking for with this new drive. Folks, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please smash that like, subscribe, and notification icon to be notified when I drop another video. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.